Hey guys, in this video of the Protopie series, I'm going to be talking about variables. Now, what are variables to begin with? Variables are basically containers which store a value, just to simplify it really much, if you haven't used CSS variables or if you haven't dealt with variables in any programming language. So you can just consider them as containers which contain some value, and you can also fetch that value, you can change that value, so on and so forth. So how do you go about creating a variable? Well, you just go to this uh, option on the left, click on the plus icon, and you can decide whether you wanna create the variable for all of the screens or only for this screen. I can say I wanna create it for all of the screens. I can go ahead and name the variable, like maybe, I don't know, item count or something. Uh, and obviously the naming can be whatever it is that you want, it can even be your name. And then once you have done that, you can actually initialize it or give it a, or assign it a value uh, the value can be either a number, a text, or a color. Um, for this particular, again, video, I'm just going to go with number, and I'm going to say the number is going to start with zero. One important thing is you see this uh, icon. It's a ladybug icon or whatever it is. You can actually tap on it, and you can see what the variable count is currently um, as you're interacting with it. So just taking things one step at a time. Like how do you go about assigning a value or changing the value of this variable? Well, it's really simple. If let's say I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create this text or say click me, and I'm not gonna again go into the details of styling this or anything, I can just say when I tap on this click me button, something should happen. It should assign a value to this variable. And what should the value be? I can say it should be, uh, I don't know, 23, right? If I do that, and if I click on it, as you can see, the 23 count has been updated. So I've assigned it value, and it's updating that value. So that's, again, at a very simple level, how you go about updating the value of a variable. One other thing, if I just go about and place some text here, so this is my text. If I, let's say, wanted, or let me just go ahead and say this is zero, and let's just increase the size of it, maybe 24, or maybe even 40, and say that obviously this green thing is obviously me debugging things but i don't want that i want to say that anytime <clears throat> when i click on this button not only should it assign it uh, assign the variable the value but it should also push the value to this text box or this text element that we've created we can do that by saying that i want to go ahead and i want to select the text and on this text i want to do what what should the content for this text be it should be a formula and what should the formula be? Well, what do you know? It should just be the variable name. And then obviously it's gonna fetch the value. So now if I, let's say, click on it, as you can see, it's 23, but the text is not updating. So that's problematic. Let's just see what we did wrong. So I'm gonna to go to this assign. I'm gonna say when I tap on it, I want this text one. This, sorry, this is text two, not text one. So I'm gonna say this text two to go and the value to be item count. So now if we have a look at it again, I'm gonna click it, and as you can see, this count is updated. So that's done. Now, a couple of other things just to make it a bit more dynamic, making it a bit more flexible, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove all of that. I'm gonna create a <clears throat> an input element, and I'm gonna say that every time I type something on this, and let me just go ahead and change this to a number, and I can go ahead and I can say when I, let's say, press enter on this particular uh, input, something should happen. And what should happen? Well, as we mentioned before, uh, we should go ahead and assign the variable a value of, now we have to define what the value should be. And let me just go ahead and change this to, well, we don't have to, you would get, just get the gist of it. I'm going to say it, the text value should change to input.text. So now that I've done that, it's going to go ahead and I can just go ahead and I can say 23, 2, 3, 4. And if I press enter, as you can see, the value of the variable is being updated. So now that we know that the variable is, value is being updated, we can go ahead and hide that green box. We can now go ahead and also create a button if we want. So we can say click me. I'm going to go ahead and give it a width and a height. So let's just give it a, the same width and the height as this uh, input. I'm gonna say the text inside of it is obviously gonna be centered. 
let me just go ahead and close my zoom sorry my loom because it's causing some interaction issues so let's just close loom and now i'm going to center it i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to give it a background of something like this and let's just go ahead and make this white so now we have this text and i can go ahead and i can say that something happens something should happen when i click on it one important thing that i would like to highlight is i'm just going to go ahead and add zero here sorry just go ahead and add zero here and i'm going to change this rename this layer to my number and let's just go ahead and actually increase the size to 40. let's just go ahead and center it and here we have our number so now what i want to do is after i've let's say entered something if I press enter, I want this value to be updated. Now, there's another really awesome way to detect changes in a variable. You don't have to always go ahead and say that this is after I tap on a button, the text needs to be updated, so on and so forth. I can always say that I need to detect any changes that are happening inside of a variable. So I can say detect, and then it's going to ask me, what do you want to detect? I'm going to say detect any changes in the item count variable. And once you, choose, once you see any changes, I want you to do something. I've said that I want you to go ahead and select the text layer, which is going to be the my number, this text layer. And I want you to go ahead and make it equals to the variable itself. And then I'm just going to press OK. And now if we go ahead and preview it, I can see 23. And if I press Enter, it's automatically going to be updated. Similarly, if I do this, it's automatically going to be updated. Now I can go ahead and I can also enter something else. I can see that I want to have a plus icon here. And let's just go ahead and add a plus icon. Let's group it, give it a size of 40 by 40. Let's center this. And I'm just going to choose the font awesome library to just fetch the icon. Let's just go ahead and center it horizontally and vertically as well. And give this a color of something like this because I'm using that elsewhere as well. And let's just go ahead and give it a radius. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a radius of eight. Let's just go ahead and make this text color white. I also don't like this again, not being, I also don't like this not being centered vertically and horizontally. So let's just go ahead and center that. So here we have our plus button and let's just move the plus button here. And here we have our minus button. So I'm gonna change that to minus button so now that we have that let's just go ahead and actually uh, make it centered sorry i actually selected a few other things which is what is this text three let's just go ahead and remove it vertically sorry horizontally again uh, make equal spacing of these elements and now i want to say let's just go ahead and make this dash now i want to say anytime i let's say tap on this dash which is the minus button I want something to happen and it should go ahead and assign the value of the to the current variable and what should the value be well it should just be the same variable minus one if i just do that this is going to work this is just going to decrease the number that that's going to exist here similarly i can go ahead and i can just duplicate this by pressing the command d key and i can say the same thing should happen when i click on the plus button but it should just plus one this so now if I preview this, I'm going to enter some text and I'm going to press enter. Or maybe let's just choose a smaller text. I'm going to say this is going to be 54 and then press enter. And then if I, let's say, reduce it, as you can see, it's reducing. If I increase it, as you can see, it's increasing. I can go ahead and make this zero as well. And it also works for negative numbers. So that's pretty much what we're going to be covering in this video. Hopefully this video gave you an introduction of how you can start using variables. Obviously variables are extremely powerful. You can use them in awesome ways and we can get into those ways a bit later as well. But this should be sufficient for you to get an idea of the features and the power of Protopy because this interaction that I'm having right now is impossible to have in Figma until and unless you create every single possibility of the numbers that a person can enter. And obviously that's impossible, right? As we know, the set of numbers is infinite, is infinite. So if it's infinite, then obviously 
having a free flowing thing like that and then the ability to plus minus and all of that is not going to be possible in figma you can only do that let's say for uh very selected uh prototyping so for example you can only say if a person presses this key the number should be updated to three or whatever it is but it's very limited so that's going to be pretty much it for this video do subscribe do hit the bell icon and i'll see you in the next one take care bye